Well, dear viewers, welcome to our channel. In this video, we are going to discuss about this Honda automatic transmission. It's actually a semi automatic transmission, call it a Honda Matic. This is the gear selector. Here we have the input shaft, and uh, here we have the stator reactive valve regulator assembly. It's a transaxle. Here we have the differential. The drive shaft is actually to be inserted in here. This is used for front engine, front wheel drive vehicle. We are going to disassemble heads. You definitely are going to love it. Here we have the oil filler. Let's disassemble it. This is actually a parallel axis transmission where we have the main shaft and the counter shaft parallel to each other. But let's disassemble it and see what we have on the inside. Here we have the speedometer connection line and uh, you see there are oil lines coming to the different plugs. Well, here we have the internal. See, this is a speedometer gear. It's mechanically connected to the counter shaft speedometer drive gear. So the speedometer data is connected from here. This is the clutch unit for first gear. Clutch unit for first gear is hydraulically operated. See, there is an oil line coming this way. And that oil line will come out through this passage. And this passage is connected to this hole. So when hydraulic pressure is there, this clutch unit will connect the speed gear to the shaft. So the gear shifting is done hydraulically. This is a speed gear for first gear on the counter shaft. It is a spline to the shaft. Let's have a closer look. Here it is. See the oil passage. So the mode of operation is as follows. This speed gear is freely riding on the main shaft. On the main shaft. The main shaft is the one that is actually connected to the crankshaft through the torque converter. So this speed gear will be connected to this main shaft only when there is hydraulic pressure in this clutch unit. When there is a hydraulic pressure that is inserted in here, coming from this regulator valve, coming from this port through this passage, when there is hydraulic pressure, the piston of the clutch will press together the clutch plates and the clutch disc. That way power will be transmitted from the shaft to this speed gear. Then this speed gear will transmit that power to the first speed gear on the counter shaft. And this counter shaft is connected to the differential. That is how power flows. Now let's take this apart and see what we have on the inside. The best practice if you have gears of this kind, the best practice is to insert a rug in between to prevent it from rotating when taking action to disassemble.
So you can see this is speed gear for first gear and it is splined to the counter shaft. So this is a direct mesh, it is splined. Now let's disassemble this and see what we have. This is a speed gear. The speed gear is actually running free on the main shaft and we have a bearing, needle bearing in here. And here we have the clutch unit. This is a clutch drum. It is splined to the shaft, to the main shaft. And back in there we have a piston. There is a piston. When oil is introduced between the piston and the drum, the piston will be moved to this side. When the piston is moved to this side, it will press the clutch plates onto the clutch disc. The clutch disc is connected to this gear, whereas the clutch plates are connected to the drum. Let's remove the snap rings and uh, see those internal details. This is a snap ring holding all the parts together. Now when we remove See? This is the external clutch plate. Here we have the piston. The piston, when hydraulic pressure is exerted, it will move against this spring. There is a spring here. It will move against this spring. Compressing this spring, the piston will be moved out. Now when the piston is moved out, it will force everything that is on its way. For example, here we have a worn out clutch disc. The clutch disc is splined to the gear. So the speed gear is always connected to the clutch disc. Then that clutch disc is followed by the clutch plates. The clutch plates, they are connected to the clutch drum. So they are always rotating with the clutch drum. Comes. So this is how it is. So when hydraulic pressure presses this together, due to the friction that is taking place between the clutch disc and the clutch plates, Power will be transmitted to the speed gear. Power will be transmitted from the clutch drum to the clutch plates, from the clutch plates to the clutch disc, then from the clutch disc to the speed gear. When that hydraulic pressure is removed, however, there will be no power transmission. The amount of power that is transmitted depends on the amount of force that is clamping this. So when there is large hydraulic pressure, it means there is much power transmission. So this is how gears are selected.
when we compare with this manual transmission type on this manual transmission type power will be transmitted when this shift sleeve slides over the hub and then connects the gear to the hub look when this is sliding when this is sliding now gear is this gear is running free but when the sleeve slides and joins the two now power will be transmitted from the speed gear to the sleeve then to the hub then to the shaft this is how power flows every time the gear needs to be selected the driver has to shift this the driver has to shift this manually but when it comes to this unit when it comes to this unit when it comes to this unit this clutch housing is connected to the shaft with a spline is splined to the shaft it is splined to the shaft and when hydraulic pressure is there when there is now the gear is moving free but when hydraulic pressure is applied this hydraulic pressure will clamp the pressure plate to the friction disc and that will transmit the torque so shifting here is done by a hydraulic fluid shifting here is done manually by selection of the gear so when the fork is sliding this sleeve only then power will be transmitted so this is the difference instead of manually shifting gears here hydraulic pressure is doing the job for us now let's proceed to removing these 12 millimeter bolts and see the internal details So this is the cover removed. Well, you can see we have idler gear for reverse. So idler gear is visible here. Well, when you look at here, we have the counter shaft that is connected to the differential, and this is the main shaft. Now we have here a reverse selector fork and a hub assembly, a sleeve and hub assembly is there. This is a servo unit for reverse gear selection. So when this gear selector is put on reverse gear, when this is selected on reverse, from this valve body, hydraulic pressure will act on the servo unit of the reverse. So what happens is this will be shifted up and it will engage the reverse gear when no hydraulic pressure is there see the reverse gear is running free but when reverse is selected and the servo unit pushes this synchronizer assembly up reverse gear will be selected just like a manual transmission we have a spline here we have a hub
that is permanently connected to the shaft and we have a selector fork. So this is for gear is for reverse gear. This is a main shaft, the counter shaft for reverse gear. We have a main shaft for reverse gear here. And the other one is this unit. Let's have a closer look. So when reverse gear is selected, hydraulic pressure will be sent to the second gear and reverse gear clutch unit. And simultaneously, hydraulic pressure will be sent to the servo unit. This unit right here is a, is a clutch unit for second gear and reverse. This is a speed gear for second gear, which is connected to the main shaft only when hydraulic pressure is present in this clutch unit. So when second gear is selected, hydraulic pressure will be introduced to this clutch then that hydraulic pressure will pressurize and press together the clutch plates and the clutch disc. That way, this second gear on the main shaft will be connected to the main shaft. Then we have a direct connection to the counter shaft. Here we have the oil filter. Here we have the entire valve body. And here we have the gear selector valve. Depending on the driver's intention, this valve body will direct hydraulic fluid, I mean transmission fluid, to the different clutch. When parking is selected, we have here a parking brake pole. And as you can see, there is a gear on the counter shaft that is designed for parking gear. Look what happens when parking is selected. Look what happens here. See that pole, it goes in there and engages. Now there is no motion. When it is disengaged, the power will be removed from the parking gear. So when the gear selector is on park, that power will be inserted in such a manner, preventing the vehicle from moving from its stationary position. When brake is on park, locks. So this way, vehicle motion is prevented. Let's keep on disassembling and see. This is a shift fork for reverse brake. The servo unit is in here. Shift fork and shift sleeve. Splined here. And on the counter shaft we have a hub that is splined to the counter shaft. This is a speed gear for second gear and reverse. Reverse, second gear. This one is a speed gear for second gear. Counter shaft speed gear for second gear. See, it's running free. Only when the hub is connected by that sleeve, it will be selected. Needle bearing, clutch, counter shaft connected to the differential. This is the differential, differential unit. All side gears, drive shafts are inserted in here. There is a spline on the side gear. Similarly, there is another shaft insertion on the other side. So this is the differential unit. Now let's quickly disassemble this valve body unit and see the internal construction. First, let's remove the oil filter. 
I suppose it's right now. So here we have the servo unit for reverse gear. Only when reverse gear is selected, hydraulic pressure will act on this servo piston and the shift lever will shift to the reverse gear. Otherwise, due to the return spring, the shift assembly will go down and that will put the gear assembly on second gear. Now let's remove this regulator and see what we have. So the idea here is that force from the moving stator could be transmitted to the hydraulic control valve through this assembly, through the piston and the reaction spring, and that could be used to engage the clutch based on the amount of torque that is presented in the torque converter. It means if there is large torque, much pressing force will be available in the clutch is the cover. Now this is the stator shaft arm. This is the stator shaft arm. So it rests on this hydraulic piston against this piston. Based on the reaction, based on the movement of the stator, it will operate this piston. So this is where that bolt is used to be inserted. That on the other side, it will operate this valve. So this valve is actuated based on torque that is available in the torque converter. So which means on the speed gears, on the speed gear clutch, the amount of torque that will be transmitted to the speed gears will be dependent on the hydraulic pressure that is inside the clutch unit and that hydraulic pressure is dependent on the position of this valve. So that is how 
the entire journey can be done only by second gear if you want or if you are driving in town say for example if you are driving less than 35 miles per hour you could select first gear only this is what makes this transmission semi-automatic gears initially will be selected by the driver the driver can select first gear and then if the vehicle starts to be driven beyond for example 35 miles per hour the driver has to shift to second gear that is the only time the input of the driver is required there is no need of depressing clutch pedal no clutch on here so the hydraulic unit this hydraulic unit this stator reactive force management system will vary the amount of torque that will reach the wheels by simply varying the amount of oil the amount of hydraulic pressure that is sent to the clutch units so this is how it operates when we assemble it back we have to make sure that the screw will align in this groove spring And see that if it is aligned perfectly we have this play well the remaining thing that we have underneath here is simply a valve selector and oil passage so this valve simply it guides oil to the different passage depending on the gear selected for example if first gear is selected hydraulic pressure will be directed to this passage then from here with this kind of arrangement it will go to the first gear, gear clutch if second gear is selected similar thing is happening and beneath here we have uh, gear valves gear pumps we have gear pumps let's remove those and uh, have a look First, let's engage this valve. Let's remove this. Shifter valve. This is it. Here we have the oil pump gear, drive gear, and here we have the oil pump driven gear. This will be driven by the torque converter. And we have a check valve, it's actually damaged. There used to be a check valve with a ball in here. If you see here the valve selector, it opens passages. It opens passages that will allow 
oil shifting depending on the gear that is selected. If you want to see the shift valve, let's have a look. This is the shift valve. So the shift valve will open and close oil passages depending on the selected gear. And also it will actuate the parking lever assembly. This serves as a lockup mechanism for selected gear. Pump, oil pump, drive gear. Oil pump, driven gear. Check valve. This is the stator shaft R. We have the stop pin. Then we have the hold down sign.
two longer bolts on this side. Three shorter bolts on this side. This is the oil line for first gear. Now we have the oil filter. Counter shaft. This is the main shaft. Second gear. Clutch unit, second gear, speed gears, clutch unit, second gear and reverse speed gears on the main shaft. Clutch hub for second gear and reverse. By the way, this fork will always engage second gear when no hydraulic pressure is presented in the servo. It will engage this hub to the second speed gear. Only when reverse gear is selected by this fork, then hydraulic pressure will lift it up and engage it on this spline of the second speed, the reverse speed gear. Only then gear selection is taking place. Now there is no selection, but when this is lifted up, see it is connected. So this is how it operates. Now let's put back the cover. This is the only line. Make sure the idler for reverse gear is engaged correctly, otherwise it will not go in.
whenever you are tightening surfaces of this kind, it's a good practice to tighten from opposite sides. That will rectify any misalignment related issues. Speed gear, first speed gear. There used to be a lock in here, it's gone now. The gear can be prevented from rotating by simply jamming some rag so that not to damage the gear piece. As you can see it's holding it in place. Same thing is true when tightening this one. And the oil pressure can be inspected by removing this valve. Only by opening this, if you want to check the oil pressure coming to the first clutch, speed for clutch for gear number one, can install an oil pressure gauge. An inspection can be done by unplugging this oil process. There are similar oil inspection plugs in this transmission so this can be inspected by using those So this is all we have for you, thank you for watching, if you like this video please smash the like button and if you are new to this channel don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment on what you felt and if you want me to do video on another subject mention it in the comment section down here and thank you for watching.